influence their students' lives until um, reading this article that I chose. And this article is titled, What's the Point of a Professor? It was published on the New York Times website, which I think is nytimes.com. And the author is Mark, um, Mark Bowerlein. Not sure how to pronounce it, but Mark Bowerlein, I think, is it. He's an English professor at Emory. So I chose this article because it's relevant to, I mean, pretty much anyone that's ever had a teacher. Um, if you think about it, that's almost everyone. Um, so we can all kind of see the impact that at least one teacher has had on our lives, maybe more. And so this article caught my attention, uh, not just because it's so relatable, but because the claim that the author made. Um, he said that the role that college professors are taking in today's society is becoming less important to students. Um, he compared it to, I think, the 60s, the 1960s. So he's saying that college professors, the role that they're playing is becoming less important to students, and it's um, kind of becoming more distant from a, a role model position or a mentor, and it's coming closer to um, someone that kind of just provides a grade to the students. Um, so I can kind of understand his point of view, but I still think teachers are really important. Uh, and they have influence over so many people, their students especially. I think they act as solid moral figures and they do fulfill a role model position to the students, uh, especially when the the students and teachers communicate and maintain a relationship. I think that's really important. Um, so in this video I'll talk about the original author's argument and why I disagree with him. Um, I have a few different sources of evidence and I'll show how they support my claim. So before we get started I'll tell you a little bit about the article um, like I said before, it's called What's the Point of a Professor? Um, and yeah, it was published on nytimes.com. I have that right here. So yeah, the author, Mark Bowerlein, is a professor at Emory. So I think that makes him pretty credible, especially about this topic, because he's with students all day, and he gets to see their relationships develop and the impact that that has on the students' lives. So in this article... He's basically making the, the argument that professors aren't as beneficial as they used to be and they don't play the same role that they used to. So I have a quote here. Um, let me find it. It's kind of long, so bear with me, but I think it's important. Um, it describes his argument perfectly. All right, here. So he's talking about um, the students' views on their teachers so he writes, but while they're content with teachers, students aren't much interested in them as thinkers and mentors. They enroll in courses and compete and complete assignments, but further engagement is minimal. One measure of interest in what professors believe, what wisdom they possess apart from the content of the course is interaction outside of class. It's often during incidental conversations held after the bell rings and away from and away from the demands of the syllabus that the transfer of insight begins and a student's emulation grows. Student emails, students email teachers all the time. Why not walk around across campus when you can fire a note from your room? But all those queries are too curt for genuine mentoring. We need FaceTime. And I agree with him that the lack of communication can, um, it can have a negative effect on the student-teacher relationship, but his overall argument that teachers aren't that important or they're becoming less important, that's what I disagree with. Um, but we'll get to that later. Um, the author uses a few different types of evidence in this article. His, let's see, his ethos or ethos. Um, I think just the fact that he's a professor gives him a lot of credibility. Uh, he has first hand experience with students um, and he can kind of see that lack of communication. Um, so that, I think that's a big one right there. Um, let's see his pathos. The author speaks 
um, of his experiences during his English classes and like I said the lack of communication um, and he he also compared it to an experience he had walking down halls I think it was in the 60s it might have been in the 80s um, and now we saw students just waiting to talk to professors they were lined up in the hall could barely get through just because students were waiting to talk to their professors and he said he recently walked through the hall. Well, I guess he walks through the halls every day now, and he hardly ever sees students doing that. But at the same time, part of that might be because they can just send in a quick email. Who knows? Um, and so for Logos, I think, let's see, he had statistics comparing the 60s versus now, um, how much students valued was uh, I think that how much they valued developing their philosophy of life and how much they value um, just being financially successful and what it, the statistics showed was in the 60s a lot of people valued the first one developing their philosophy of life and um, I should have pulled up the numbers but not as many people um, valued being financially successful and today, in the same um, questionnaire, the numbers flipped. So people or students just want to be financially successful. Uh, well, not just, but that was a lot higher than developing their philosophy of life. So um, that was the, the author's argument, but I have to disagree with them. Excuse me. So... He did have a lot of good evidence, and he used it pretty effectively if you read the article. It's, he makes a strong ar argument, but I disagree with him. Um, the stance I took is completely opposite, and I believe that teachers are some of the most influential and important people in a student's life. And I actually found a quote from Barack Obama. I think it was in 2008. He gave a speech on education, and... Um, when he was discussing the importance of teachers, he said, I'll read the quote right now, he said, from the moment our children step into a classroom, the single, <clears throat> excuse me, the single most important factor in determining their achievement is not the color of their skin or where they come from. It's not who their parents are or how much money they have. It's who their teacher is. It's the person who stays past the, past the last bell and spends their own money on books and supplies. And I have to completely agree with him here. Um, teachers play a huge role in students' lives. They spend a lot of time together in the classroom, possibly more than any adult in the student's life. Um, and it's in a learning environment. That's a lot different than where most adults spend the time with the, with the kids. Um, and I was reading online about a study done um, by two Harvard economists. Um, it was in 2012, and they found that a good teacher can influence um, a lot of things in a student's life, such as where they attend college, how much money they earn, the type of neighborhoods they live in. Um, I think they, they said a good teacher can influence them to make more money and to live in better neighborhoods and also avoid teen pregnancy, which is, um, I think all of those are the pretty big ones. So uh, in, the, in the article, the author was saying that teachers are just someone who provides a grade for students, but this study here kind of, you know, proves that wrong. They, inf they influence way more aspects of the, the students' lives, and um, they're all positive aspects, too, which is a big one. I also found an article in the, Huff the Huffington Post, uh, their website, and they found that well, I guess they didn't really find this, but they brought up a point that a strong relationship with the teacher can offer a lot more benefits outside of school, such as um, networking and having references and uh, career info or advice, because um, they're not really immediate benefits, like when the student's still in school, but say they graduate and they're looking for a job, these connections can come into play. Uh, excuse me, they can come into play and uh, they're really priceless if you think about it. 
if they can get someone a job or an interview, if they can help out with so many things. And so um, those were the three, three uh, sources of evidence I had, and I think they kind of hopefully combated the argument that the, the author was making. Um, so I agree that the lack of uh, communication could be affecting student-teacher relationships, but teachers still play an extremely important role in their students' lives. They provide support in different areas that most adults um, can't really do. And they influence college choices, um, other life choices, such as the teen pregnancy. And they just offer valuable connections later in life. So I believe that teachers are important in today's society, um, completely opposite of what the author was saying. I think they do act as a moral figure and a role model, and those relationships just skyrocket when the communication's there, and the relationship stays strong. So that's, that's my presentation, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, remember to appreciate your teachers, because who knows, without them, you probably wouldn't be where you are today. Thanks, guys.